Did he get it off? Yes, he did. And with nerves of steel, Jay knocks down that shot. And what an amazing play by Trey Jones. Mike Schmitz of ESPN. We're here with Duke point guard Trey Jones. Uh, Trey, I know it's a little bit of a strange time with you know COVID-19, and you're preparing for the NBA draft. So, what has kind of your day-to-day -day process been like? You know, going through this. Um, I mean, my my days consist of um, getting up early in the morning. Right now, um, finding a, a place to work out. Um, I've lucked out with um, my brother uh, being in a good situation, having a, a little gym in his basement and a little weight room. So been able to work out and stay in shape still. And before we get into your clips here, I know Tyus, you know, your older brother, has, has turned into kind of one of the better young backup point guards in the NBA, right? And, and playing mm -hmm. with Memphis and, and having a huge impact. You can see it on the floor, on the film. Statistically, he's been tremendous. What have you taken away from him and, and – uh, basically being around him, being around the team, what have you picked up in regards to how the NBA game is going to be different than college? Right. I mean, just to start off with, I mean, early in his NBA career, um, he didn't play a whole lot. Um, he was thrown in um, in some weird situations. And so I think just being ready always. Um, I mean, let, what I've learned from him early on was to, to always be ready. Um, you never know when your name's going to get called and when your name is called. Um, you got to be ready and, and take full advantage of, of the moment that you're in. Yeah, no, absolutely. And you've seen him kind of blossom, you know, throughout his career. I think still three twenty, still 23 years old, so has has a bright future, you know, ahead of him. So we're going to dive into some of your clips here, uh, break down kind of your game on both ends of the floor, you know, so, some areas when where you've been really strong, some areas where you've been really good, and then maybe some areas you're still working on as well and kind of ask you, you know, what you're seeing in certain scenarios. So. I think the main, like I said, the main intrigue with you right away is just your ability to guard. And a lot of that is, is pressuring the ball. A lot of it is your instincts, uh, your IQ for the game. What are the keys in your mind to being such an effective defender? Right. I feel like um, starting off, uh, being able to bring it every single night, every single play. Um, you can't really, can't really let off on the defensive end um, because then that could, that could trigger the, whoever, you're, whoever you're playing against. That could trigger them and get them rolling for the entire night. So I think just trying not to take any plays off throughout the entire night and also just being that leader that, um, you know, your, your entire defense is, beh is behind you. Um, they're all they're all watching you as, as you pick up, um, whether it's full court or half court. Um, wherever you pick up the ball handler, you know that your defense is behind you, and so you got to set the tone. That's perfect, and that kind of leads us into your ball pressure. And, and I think that's when you're most effective and going to be most effective in the NBA because, you know, these guards, they don't like – guys getting up into them, you know, whether it's 94 feet or just across the half court line. What are you trying to accomplish here? This is early in the season against Kansas. Right. I think it's the same thing. I'm just trying to get into the ball. Um, I mean, take them out of their offense, trying to push them out on the arc, uh, not, not let them set up their offense and then uh, force them into his weaknesses. I think he was a, I think he was a right, he might've been a right driver. I don't mm -hmm. remember this guy. I'm yeah. quite full, fully, but um think I kind of baited him into a jive and then jumped a little bit. Yeah, against Marcus Garrett, that's that's great defense, you know, and then that's an energizing play, right? Your bench is fired up, your teammates, your coaching staff, and that's the type of energy that you can bring. And then this is last year, too, against Kyler Edwards. Similar deal, right? Just kind of jumping his move, taking it in the chest, and you can see, you know, everybody's, everybody's pumped up and, and ready to go. Right. So uh, I think that's what you can be kind of the head of the snake uh, mm -hmm. and just kind of getting under the skin of opposing guards and so this is against Kobe White and again like I said I went back to last year because I thought you played really good on ball defense against a lot of NBA caliber guards who are some of the toughest guards you've defended and who are you looking forward to guarding most in the NBA right um I mean right here uh Kobe White was definitely up there for for one of the toughest I had to guard last year um I mean, Kai Bowman was up there, mm -hmm. how, how athletic he was mm -hmm. um, physically. Uh, he, he was real strong and uh, real athletic. So, um, I, mean, I mean, from the top of my head, those are definitely um, the two that stick out to me the most right now. Um, but, I mean, just with having to watch a lot of film, knowing, knowing my role, knowing that um, if I was able to take those guys out of their game, um, their, their team is a lot different. So, I knew that was my role, and that's what I just try to do every single night. You do a great job in the sideline, kind of keeping the ball pinned to the sideline. What are you trying to accomplish here? Right. Um, I know that the sideline is 
uh, kind of a help defender. Can't can't really get get around the sideline. So um, with keeping him on that side, I have um, an advantage there. And then um, with him turning his back to me, he exposed the. He didn't really bring the ball with me. He left it behind him a little bit. And I I was able to poke at that. And you're really good at that, whether it's in pick and roll or uh, you know kind of in these isolation situations, reaching around with your outside hand and and forcing those turnovers and and some of that against Cole Anthony too. What were those battles like? Right, um, right, Cole. Um, it's always been a battle um, going against him. Um, I mean, with players uh, that that their tendency is to to score the ball, they seem to be higher dribblers, um, more more dribbles, and um, they want you to fall asleep. So. Um, you never can really fall asleep here. Um, always know that they're in, they they are in attack mode, um, and when you get the chance on them, that you gotta be able to jab at the ball. Um, just try to take them out their rhythm, out their comfort. Yeah, just you can see there, no airspace. You know, you're you're mm -hmm. right up in his face, um, and then just the active hands, right? You're kind of tracking the ball, and just being more active than he is really helps you. Now, I did think there were a few times this year where you got beat off the bounce, maybe more than in the past. I, right. Did you feel that way? <laughs> I did a little bit this year. Um, there would be times where, I mean, I don't want to blame being <laughs> tired, but sometimes I get a little tired. Yeah. And, uh, have a little let up on the defensive end, but uh, a lot of the times my deep, my my teammates were there to pick me up. Again, you're one of the best, if not the best, on ball defenders, especially amongst guards in the draft. So um, you want to start with that, of course. But you know, nobody's perfect, and I thought there were a few times this year where they got you. What what about this, yeah. Markel Johnson? What's he like? Yeah, I remember, um, I mean, he's super athletic, uh, super crafty, um, knew that he did want to go, I think might have been left, spin back right, I think yep. he, hit, he hit me with it twice this game to start off the game, Yeah. and it was one of those where I knew it was coming, he still got me on it, I just fell asleep on it, so. Yeah, I mean, it happens, yeah. it happens to the best defenders, but yeah. I will say, if you give up a step, you have really good technique at the rim, uh, talk me through this. Yeah, we had a lead on them, trying to make it tough on Cassius all night. Mm -hmm. um, he, with him being the key part of the team, but um, knew that he would try to get going more and more um, with how the how the lead was well, the lead that we had. Um, so I mean, he got a little bit little bit of that step, but um, just try to beat him to the hoop and then just go straight up and let my help side come over. I'm just in my help side. Uh, I think one of the questions teams will have is your ball pressure is great, right? And, and at your size, they might ask, okay, is he going to be able to handle these bigger guards, right? right. Bigger right. guards. And, and maybe, you know, a guy like David Johnson was able to get downhill and, and get to the mm -hmm. front of the rim because of that size. But how would you answer that question? Right. I definitely think um, it, it won't be a problem at all. Um, I mean, just working on my, my strength every single day, uh, my explosiveness, my athleticism. Um, I think that's something that, um, definitely is a challenge for guards, um, especially my size. But I think with the work that I'm putting in and how much um, attention to detail I put in uh, on, on the defensive end, um, I definitely don't think it'll be a problem for myself. Yeah, I think you have a chance to be one of the best point guard defenders you know, in the NBA. And it's not just the mindset, but also your technique, I think, is, is really, really good. And you can tell you, know, you grew up with uh, older brothers you know, playing, <laughs> playing the game and now a right. point guard brother in the NBA. And you can see it in ball screens. Um, I thought you did a really good job of kind of, like I said earlier, but more in pick and roll, keeping the ball pinned to the sideline. Uh, mm -hmm. What are you hoping to accomplish here? What's the key to that? Right. I'm um, just trying not to let him get to the middle of the court um, as he's able to create for others when he gets to the middle. And um, I mean, he's able to get to the middle of defense, whether he's creating for himself or for other teammates and shooters around him. So trying to keep him on that sideline again. Um, use the sideline to my advantage, and uh, Vern does a really good job in stopping the wall right there as well. Yeah, and like you said, turning it back and then taking away that, that snake, right? You see mm -hmm. the best cards yeah. kind of against those ices, snake they'll snake you. it back to the middle. And so you take that away, so does Vern. You take away the pocket pass. Uh, that's really good, simple but effective. And then here against Cole, you remember this play? Yeah, I think he just exposed the ball a little bit too much. Yep. And then um, was able to jump on it right away. Yeah, and you jump right. top side, right, and, and do a great job of kind of making sure that he's not going to get back, back middle if he tries. Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah, not letting them get to the middle and use the screen and let them get downhill as well. So Because this is what happens there. when they do, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs>
every once in a while you'll see that even from these small guards uh, getting back to the middle and then that puts your defense in a bind. Um, yeah. But overall, I think you're phenomenal in these situations. And here against Shamori Ponds, just look how aggressive you are. I mean, you're active with your hands, your feet. It's like you're attached to his body. And then Zion kind of jumps, jumps the passing lane there. What was he like to play with? I mean, it was crazy. I mean, just <laughs> defensively. I think everyone obviously knows what he was doing offensively. But defensively, um, I mean, as long as you put um, yourself in the right position and you're making the right plays, I mean, with how athletic he was and, I mean, physically just gifted and, and talented, um, I mean, he would come up with, like, like those plays right there. He would come back sides to it. I think Clemson mm -hmm. uh, yeah. got someone to turn their back, and that's when he got his dunk. So, I mean, as long as I was up there pressuring the ball and putting putting the defense in the right position, he would, he would come up with a steal cam. RJ, those guys would, would come through with their, with their talents and, and um, come up with a steal or a big-time play. But again, I do think you have the the tenacity and, and toughness to hold up against some of these switches. This is last year against Rui, uh, you know, a lottery pick, top 10 pick. I thought you did a great job of kind of, um, you know, fronting him and then it kind of into a three-quarter denial. Then you swipe the ball away and now they're all junked up. Uh, so you're going to have to maybe be on an Anthony Davis, a, a Jokic, an Embiid, you know, for one possession. Um, right. who, are, who are you looking forward to guarding the most? Right. I mean, obviously, to start off with, my brother. Yeah. Um, been battling with him in workouts and things like that for, for years, and then just looking up to him and uh, picking up on everything I can in his game. And so, obviously, just to start off with um, him, but, I mean, any of the top point guards, really, um, I want to be uh, one of, if not the best defender um, on ball um, in the league. And then off the ball, you're really good. You're aware, you're active. You're kind of one of these ball hawk rover types who can jump the passing lanes and you know shoot the gap. Did you play any football growing up? I did. I played safety. Well, there you go. <laughs> I, uh, that was my next question. Right. I wasn't. A, I wasn't a big time hitter, so I, I was just wait for uh, a pass and try to go pick it off. I, I wasn't a physical guy in the defensive end. So that's where the instincts come from, though, for you. Yeah. For yeah. Sure, you for can sure. see it. You can see it on film, and I think you do a really good job. Whether it's DHOs, um, whether it's you know defending some of these different off-ball actions, you do a great job of just being aggressive. What do you see here? Right. I knew he was coming up for um, for the handoff, and so I was just trying to get in between there um, with the rule of the handoff to the the guy handing it off can't, um, what is it, bump you or yep. be moving or whatever. So I knew there was a chance of me being able to slide through and get my hand on it. Yeah, and that's perfect. And, and just aggressive, instinctual. And your positioning, too, I thought has been really good. Maybe here you're a little bit hugged up, but – uh, mm -hmm. What are you looking at here? Right. Um, just them throwing it over the top um, to Abuki, Azabuki. Um, yeah. Knowing that when he gets it, he'll probably bring it down right away. He won't keep it all the way up. So I was just able to uh, get my hands in there and, and uh, cause, a, cause a turnover. Yeah, you had some big plays down the stretch of that game. Uh, had the little pull up, made, made some big shots. And uh, so I think that's what teams like about you, too, right? Is that you can come in right away and you played in big game after big game, you know, throughout your, your career. All right, so we touched on the, the defensive side of the ball and, and now kind of blending the offensive side for you between what last year was like and then, and then also what this year was like. And your shooting is really, I think, where you made the biggest jump, um, right. you know, from 26, 27% to now 36 or 37 this past season. What did that taco fall game do to your psyche? Was that like a, a turning point for you mentally? With some of those games, definitely um, it motiva motivated me in the off season, um, knowing that I'd have to take on a bigger role in the offensive end, and if teams dared me to to shoot like that, that I'd have to make them pay. Yeah, and I thought you did that in, in spot up situations. You were really, really good. And then we don't have much of it in here, but you seemed really comfortable pushing and pulling up in transition too. It seems like yeah. that's an area of your game that that you added. You looked a little bit more comfortable. Um, I think the main thing right away is. You just your ability to move the ball, right? Um, it's probably going to be more like it was your freshman year at Duke in the NBA, right? You might have, you know, all-star big, all-star wing next to you, and you got to, you know, share the sugar, right? And I think mm -hmm. that's what – that's a, another thing teams really like is, is you're comfortable playing that role. Uh, and mm -hmm. you can see it, especially in transition. So I love your hit-aheads. You're just – you got a shooter sprinting the floor, and you're going to – you're going to help them out, right? You're going to move the ball, right. and that's going to lead to instant offense. And then also uh, looking ahead and rewarding your big for running the floor, right? What do you right. see here as, as you push? 
Right, I see Vern running the floor. Um, Matt's in the corner, so um, his guy was kind of shaded out to him. Um, but with Vern running the floor, I got to reward the big man for running like that. Yeah, yeah. and thread the needle like, right on, right yeah. on the money. Um, <laughs> and we've seen you do it with one hand. We've seen you do it with two. Uh, and really good with these bounce passes. Also, this is your freshman year. You remember this play? Yeah, <laughs> the bounce pass to Cam. <laughs> Talk me through this one. Right, so see him just streaking on the backside. Uh, there's a little gap that I could fit it through um, before the defense, before his defender and my defender could really um, cross paths. So being able to throw it, throw it up there, uh, similar to the Kansas play uh, yep. this past year as well. And so then in the half court last year, okay, I love how you still were able to have an impact even if the ball wasn't in your hands, right? So yeah. what, are you, what are you doing here? Take me through this. Remember, we didn't have a lot of movement, I don't think, um, versus Florida State. So just trying to trying to get some movement here, setting a flare screen for Jack. Yeah. Um, seeing that I had a slip, but then after I slipped, Cam slid down in the corner and his man lost him a little bit. And um, with how quick he can get a shot off and the shooter he is, knew that was an easy three for him. And that's just yes. you generating offense without having to use any dribbles, you know? Right. And just right. kind of improvising. That I think that play right there shows your IQ and your impact without needing, you know, a bunch of volume. So now into ball screen reads, right? I think you played a little bit more out of pick and roll this past season. Uh, how would you evaluate yourself as a pick and roll passer? And is there anyone you watch and study, try to take little things from? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think, um, I mean, there's obviously there's areas to improve on um, in the pick and roll game for sure. Um, but, I mean, there's watched a lot of Chris Paul. Mm -hmm. um, feel like he's the best pick and roll player there, there's been. So yep. um, just with how he sets up his guys, um, gets them into the screen, uh, the way he snakes, the way he um, makes reads off of it, whether it's the pass or pulling up or in the play behind, skipping. Um, I mean, just the, the different reads he was able to, he's able to make off uh, to the pick and roll situations. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's a stud, so many nuances. Uh, I think you're really good at hitting the roller. I think that's probably your best uh, attribute as a pick and roll passer. I mean, we'll get into the pick and roll scoring a little bit later, but in these drop situations, you guys played out of this this horn set a lot, right? Yep. And then mm -hmm. what, Vern would dive and Matt Hurt would pop? Yeah, Vern would dive, Matt Hurt would pop. So it would be either lob to Vern, um, hit back to Matt, or there in the corner if Cash Guy would crack in a little more, it would be a skip to Cash, which we got a lot as well. Yeah. For sure, and, and that's I mean that's it right there, right? They don't get a hit at the free throw line, and then there's no weak side tag, you know, out of the corner, and you throw it up to Vern. That's that's great. That's what's gonna look like in the NBA. You're gonna have a stretch four probably next to you, mm -hmm. or, or a wing playing the four, and then a diver, maybe even a stretch right. five. So uh, I think that's really really gonna help you. But overall, I, I think you showed some promise here. You can see on these next few clips, right? This is perfect. It's a great angle at it. What are you reading as you come off? What's kind of your progression? Right, I'm uh, reading. Vern rolling, and then also the backside seeing um, if they pull over so he wouldn't be open for the lob, then the skip is there like like it was a lot this time, I remember. Yeah, and, and that's that's money. It's a great pass. And I think eventually you'll be able to make that probably off a live dribble too, right? And just make right. that, that one-handed hit. Just skip um, it. Yep. Uh, so for you as a pick-and-roll scorer, okay, um, what's the key for you to be an effective pick-and-roll scorer, you think, in the NBA? Right. Um, just making the right reads. Being able to shoot, obviously, uh, from behind the behind the pick and roll, whether if they go under, or if the if the big isn't high enough up, and I'm able to get by my get my man, um, I'm able to run him into the screen. So, um, obviously, being able to stop and pop, um, but also, um, I think the mid range shot for me is something that I've always gotten into. Um, it's something that I could um, think be really effective in the NBA with. Yep. How much the how much the big man drops off and then the pick and roll as well. And so I'm a big proponent of like guys who kill the mid range. That's what you do. Then kill the mid range, you know. And mm -hmm. and we've seen you kind of continue to extend your range. And like I said, I, you know, I think this is going to be the key, right? If teams are going right. to dare you to shoot, then okay, you got to make them pay because you're going to be at your best when you're playing against those drops with them kind of right. trying to corral you. Because this is what it can look like if they don't have your respect, right? Then you're much more uh -huh. predictable. Right. You see what I mean? Yeah. But one way to combat that, if you don't have it going from three, what's one way to combat these unders? Um, getting them under the screen, going under the arc, having them set the, um, having them set the screen a little lower, and then getting to that mid range. Yeah, I think just getting that rescreen, right? 
And then yeah. so they're okay. They're basically going under here on you, and then you get the rescreen. He runs into it, and then elbow. You're automatic from there. And, you yeah. know, again, phenomenal mid range shooter. And then this is what I think it's going to look like in the NBA if they're daring you. Okay, you know, you've improved yeah. so much as a perimeter yeah. shooter for three, and that's really going to open things up for you. So um, again, your progress there has has really opened up your game, I think. And so then you're going to face some switches, right? Again, I don't think you're going to be some hey, let's spread out and play 1-4 flat for Trey because he's going to go get 40, right? We have James Harden and guys like that who are more, you know, that's more their game. But you're still going to see a lot of switches. And, and I think a big part of that is being a threat on these pull-up threes, right? Mm -hmm. Because if yep. he's able to gap you, then that's a tough shot. Um, but I thought we saw progress of that in a few games here against Michigan State. What are you reading here? Man, um, big on big switch. Yep. Uh, knew that. I think he had two fouls at the time, and so he was going to be playing safe. So he was hanging off and just felt the felt the pull of three was able to hit. Yeah, and that's the key to kind of setting the table. You know, now they got to step up and guard you a little bit, right? Take away your airspace, and then you can play off of that lefty hezzy, lefty hang dribble a little bit more. You do a great job of doing that here, kind of a double a little a little hezzy, catch him off balance, and then the pull up in the mid range. So. That's great. Um, and so that's kind of you with the ball in your hands. But the main area, I think, one of the main areas you made a big jump is just being able to catch and shoot, right, and being more confident in these situations. Yeah. And this is perfect. You hit, re-space, hands and feet ready, step into it with confidence, splash. Um, that's that's it right there, man. That's, that's yeah. textbook. So I think the last thing we're going to hit on here before we let you go is your finishing. Uh, where do you think you're at as a finisher, and who are some of the best guards that you study in that regard? I mean, guys that finish around the rim, obviously Kyrie Irving yep. um, is the main guy that, that comes to mind um, with how well he maneuvers himself around the rim and in traffic. Um, I think Stephen Curry, um, I think is really uh, good at finishing around the rim. He has some, some different finishes, some scoop shots that, yep. that, that you definitely have to work on. But, uh, I mean, Damian Lillard. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, but... Kyrie Irving, some, someone that um, I've been watching for a while and just the, the way he can finish and um, get to different spots around the room. Yeah, he's a stud in, in the paint. He's ridiculous. He's got the same foot, same hand, the spin finish. He's got everything. Uh, and I think one thing that's going to help you is that the fact that you do have this floater, right? You have these floaters, you have these leaners, and this is you against a drop, just being able to get to that. If they're going to give you that, then you have that. And, and I think you've continued to fine-tune that over the course of your career. And then do you remember this? Yeah, just getting downhill. Just um, big boy him a little bit. <laughs> but I think having, like, being able to do it off your right foot, off your left foot, having these little mm -hmm. leaners. Uh, TJ McConnell's a guy who's really good in these kind of areas, you know, exploding over the top um, and just using the glass, um, right foot, left foot, doesn't matter. And, and so I think you, you had a lot of success there. Uh, one thing I'll say, too, is um, maybe using the rim a little bit more, right, to keep your dribble and keep probing. Um, right. And, and kind of those, you'll call it a Gretzky. Some people call it a Nash now. Um, but in this situation, it's maybe an area you could have done that, right? Mm -hmm. Just keep, sure. keep getting downhill, skate along the, the baseline, um, mm -hmm. and then whether it's a, a finish on the other side or, or a hit to gold wire in the corner. But I think you showed a lot of promise in transition, and you love these lefty in and outs. So you cover a lot of ground with your strides. And then this is, I mean, this is a big time finish. Left foot, left hand. Uh, get a little bump, falling out of bounds, great touch. So you have it. And then, look, teammates are fired up. Everyone's jacked up. La last question here I would uh, have to ask you just what's the biggest thing you took away from, from Coach K and, and that whole Duke experience that, you know, I'm sure every kid, you know, watching this w would have died to been in your shoes. So what are the biggest takeaways from, from that whole experience? Oof, that's, that's tough to be able to put into um, one one thing, but – um, the, something that I definitely did take away from everything that I learned at Duke was um, just to, to be all in to, to what you, whatever you're doing, uh, wherever you're at, uh, whatever organization you're part of, program, whatever it is, um, just to be all in. Um, I mean, if, if you're one foot in, one foot out, you're not going to get the most out of it. The team won't get the most out of it. Um, you won't be your best self. So wherever, wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, just being all in. Um, throwing yourself in, sacrificing uh, for the better, whatever it is, um, just being all in and um, just wanting the best for everyone around you. Great, yeah, I think that's a, a perfect message for, for young kids, you know, watching this. And, and there are a lot of uncertainties in the draft, and I think you're 
one of these guys who teams know what they're getting from you. Uh, they know you're going to work every day. They know you're going to bring that defensive mentality. Uh, and then all the other intangibles, your playmaking, your IQ, improved shooting from three. So, uh, you know, obviously you have a very bright future, and we appreciate you kind of taking the time to, to sit down and, and chop it up and, and break down your game. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.